Hey guys, okay, we're gonna start this one out with a bump date. I just finished working out and I need to cool down before I start talking. I am 39 weeks exactly today, so. That is the belly. Baby number three, 39 weeks. Let's jump into the bump date. So, like I said, I am 39 weeks exactly today. Yay me! <laughs> I'm so proud of my body. I'm old and I've sort of put my body to the test this pregnancy a little bit in different ways and it's just holding it together. It's doing what it's supposed to do. So. Go body, um, and we are eyes on the prize right now to make it to due date because that's just what I do. <laughs> I made it to my due date with my other two. Might as well make that a goal this time as well. I just finished my workout and thought I would quickly record my symptoms now, and then we will cut and flash forward to this Friday when I have my midwife appointment, and I will just go over whatever is discussed at that appointment, I am going to beg my midwife <laughs> to cervically check me. I am going to pull all the strings. I'm going to tell her that um, it is for scientific research <laughs> that I just really want to know. I just want to know that information about my body. So that's neither here nor there, but we will cut to that clip um, very shortly. I just thought I'd talk about symptoms because I'm 39 weeks pregnant. And I think anyone who is out about this gestation is probably on YouTube, Googling all the videos, trying to see what is everyone else feeling and then when did they actually go into labor? Or maybe that's just me. But I have been just like obsessively watching YouTube videos. I think it's fascinating. It is so interesting to see all the different scenarios, how women experience these final weeks of pregnancy, what finally, like what, what ended up happening with them and stuff. It just, it gives you something to do to bide the time and stay excited and that kind of thing. So the number one thing I want to talk about is the fact that I have not had any prodromal labor since Thursday. That was the last day and today is Wednesday. So it's been almost an entire week. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> that I have experienced these very painful, strong, timeable contractions that lead to nowhere. Um, I have continued to have Braxton Hicks throughout the day which is just when your belly gets tight, but it doesn't hurt and you can walk and talk through it and it lasts only about 30 to 60 seconds, you know? And I have continued to have some monster contractions, the ones that are very intense, pressure, cramping, that ringing out of the muscles feeling, especially that feeling of something being driven into your cervix, like the, the prodromally type contractions, like the contractions I feel versus the Braxton Hicks. They last um, anywhere from a minute and 15 seconds to like a minute and a half. They hurt and I feel them. I feel not only pressure, but also pain um, in my belly, in my back and all along my pelvic floor. And it's just a completely different beast. I cannot talk through them. I cannot function. God forbid we are in the car when they hit. Um, oh my God. Like, it's just, it, it's so unbearable um, when like we're, when I'm being jostled around or whatever. Like I have to be still through them, the gentle swaying, breathing, that kind of thing. So, but I'm only getting those like a couple times throughout the day. Another thing I'm continuing, or not, I shouldn't say continuing, another new thing I'm experiencing over the past several nights is I've been getting menstrual-like cramps, like waves of, of pretty heavy menstrual cramps throughout the night. They seem to come between like midnight and 2.30 is the window that I end up waking up to them. 
Um, and I want to say that they are actually linked to needing to pee because I know that um, anytime I let my bladder get even remotely full, I start contracting and the pain associated with my contractions increases for the more I need to use the restroom. And unfortunately, when I say I need to like use the restroom, it might just be a little cup full, you know? It just depends on how low my baby's head is, how much things are compressing my bladder, and then, and then how much it's filling up compared to like how much room it has to fill up. So it's not an exact science. And it just seems to happen at night and I don't know, but um, maybe the two are related or maybe they're not. But it is something I'm kind of experiencing on a nightly basis now for at least the past four, if not the past five nights. I am starving. And not only am I starving, but I am absolutely famished. There is no end to my hunger. I am trying to make um, meals and snacks within like the foods I typically eat, healthy foods, nutritious foods. Sometimes it just quite frankly is not enough. Um, I find that I am craving fat a lot more. It, like for the past several weeks, it's been carbohydrates that I've been sort of like leaning toward not necessarily craving, but wanting to eat. You know what I mean? Like just, it's the foods that my body is saying, fill me up with these things, you know? Um, but now it's like, I want full fat meat, you know, like animal fat, full fat dairy, just that really calorie dense fatty food. It's a very specific and I don't want to call it a craving because I can't say I'm like craving it. It's this, it's this calling in my body that this is what I need. Put this into me. And I don't, I'm, I know that there's a reason for that. And so I'm not skimping on it. And I'm definitely like going all in. I've been eating full fat dairy. Like we get this um, Russian yogurt that is so good. I've been putting like cream into certain dishes that I'm eating. I have been eating like um, fattier cuts of meat. Most of the meat I eat is either ground chicken, elk, or venison, um, which are very, very, very lean proteins. But I've been trying to get a lot of salmon now in my diet and just trying to get a lot of healthy fats in. And I have definitely seen <laughs> this new diet change reflect on the scale. We'll get to that in a minute. Sleep is hit or miss. I am generally fatigued throughout the day, especially come like 2 p.m. after I'm done working out and everything and the day starts wearing down, but I am finding it difficult to fall asleep. My mind is very much racing, um, just thinking about random things. And so I'm not really falling asleep until like 11 or midnight, even though I'm in bed by around 9, 30, 10. And then I have to get up a thousand times to pee. I have to get up and take my three-year-old to pee twice in the night right now because it used to be that I'd only take him up once and it was enough. But then he started having accidents in the bed. And I don't know where that's coming from because it's not something he does. And um, he also doesn't drink all that much at night right now. Like we make sure that we keep that on like the minimum so that we can avoid these situations. But now I'm having to take him pee like around 10 and then again around two or three, which is fine because I have to get up and pee those times anyway. So it's not like it's any added difficulty for me, but it is taxing on the body to, cause I have to like carry him out of bed or else he screams crying, he fights going. So I need to carry him to the potty and then carry him and put him back to bed with this belly, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, every time I'm like, hey, maybe this is the time my water will break. <laughs> and then I'm getting these um, contractions and these cramps at night and stuff. So I am getting quite disruptive sleep. Um, and I can't say I'm very rested right now, but it's good enough, I guess. My bladder is um, smaller than a poppy seed. I cannot retain any fluid and I'm drinking an exceptional amount because not only am I now drinking my 
two liters of water, but I'm also having three like enormous cups of tea. I'll either have three cups of red raspberry leaf tea or I'll have two cups of red raspberry leaf tea and then I'll have one cup of um, stinging nettle tea each day. So, and then I have my protein shake on top of that and those fluids I treat separate from my just pure water. So I'm getting like a lot of liquid, oh my God. And can I just say, I am putting milk down like it is nobody's business right now. So, I mean, I can't even, I can't even tell you how much fluids I'm getting right now, but it is constant and that probably explains why I'm having this, I'm actually getting a contraction right now. Why I'm getting so many Braxton Hicks throughout the day is just because my uterus is constantly irritated by, oh man, this is, it's just so much pressure. It's just a Braxton Hicks, but oh. um, it's just so irritated by my bladder constantly being like filled up. A couple good things I can say is that I have not had any swelling at all this pregnancy. I said I had a little bit of heartburn last week. That must have been a fluke because I haven't had any since. I almost wonder if I was getting heartburn because I was having so many contractions um, during all those prodromal labor episodes that like maybe it was just squeezing everything up and out of my throat. I don't know, but I haven't had any heartburn. Um, I don't have any pain to complain about other than my pelvic floor has started to bother me again. Um, it's not too bad, but it's again, like starting to get a little bit uncomfortable to pee. I just think it's the pressure, you know? I, I think that all of these sensations and the driving downward and probably like sitting on my labor ball might not even be all the best to do all day long either just because it's so much pressure on my pelvic floor um but that is a little bit uncomfortable but not anything i would really complain about um and i'm not out of breath i have not really been that out of breath at all this pregnancy so that's nice. Again, probably because his baby is like hanging out down at my ankles. He's so low. Another um, crazy thing that happened actually was that I, I like, let's just talk about cervical fluids for a minute. They are on steroids right now. It's just a lot happening. Um, but on 38 plus five and 38 plus six, I definitely lost my entire mucus plug again. And I did a little bit of reading and it turns out that the mucus plug usually is approximately two tablespoons of fluid. I never realized it was that much. So I had said I had lost the plug back at 35 plus two. And that's when all of these Brax, uh, all these Braxton Hicks and then prodromal labor contractions started to come. If I were to judge how much I saw then with this two tablespoon amount, I think I'd say I'd only lost about half of my plug. This time I'm saying maybe half to 75%, but who knows like if that two tablespoon amount is the actual amount or not. But suffice it to say, it came out and I got super <laughs> stoked thinking, hey, this is gonna be a sign, but you know, here we are again. It just doesn't mean anything. I had um, continued to hand express colostrum. Yesterday was my last day. I filled my last syringe. I have 80 milliliters now in just a ton of syringes in my deep freezer. I have decided I'm actually gonna stop. Like this is the time when you should be doing nipple stimulation if you want to, you know, induce your labor or whatever. But I'm gonna stop because I'm getting a little sore to be honest, and I know it's because um, I I don't think I have the best technique. I've watched how you're supposed to hand express, and it seems like you're supposed to have your fingers mostly like off of your areola, and then you, you pinch forward. I very much have my hands on my areola. I have big areolas like TMI, but whatever. Um, to begin with, so maybe like that's just where I have to be. But when I'm hand expressing, my fingers are very like very close to the base of my nipple, and I don't actually think that's where you're supposed to be applying pressure. But it's where I need to in order to, um, it, you know, like express the milk. I I don't seem to get any when I'm farther behind. So I do think I occasionally have been like damaging and inflaming my breast tissue 
because this is not the first time it's happened. But now I'm sort of like, okay, I'm at the end. I do not want to start my breastfeeding journey with sore nipples. <laughs> you know, like my baby's mouth will do a good enough job of like destroying me for me. So I'm going to stop now. I reached like the 80 mil mark. I'm very happy about that. I have everything labeled, packed away into freezer coolers. We're going to bring one with us to the hospital when the baby's born. So I have a little stash on hand um, so that I can stay on top of the jaundice situation with this baby if he develops it. And we will just go from there. But I am now officially hanging up my colostrum hand expressing hat for the rest of this pregnancy so I could just like rest and um, yeah, not not feel sore anymore. In terms of macros, workouts, and weigh-ins, I, I took lifting off, let's see, I lifted Monday and Tuesday of last week, but then I did not lift Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I did walk on Wednesday of last week. I did not walk Thursday or Friday, but then I did walk Saturday and Sunday. So I basically like stuck to my cardio schedule over the course of the week, but I took a break from lifting because I was very fatigued last week. And I had also like been coming off the heels of many weeks of prodromal labor. And I just kind of felt the need that I needed to take a step back and just chill out. But I feel great now. And I had a great lifting session on Monday. I did glutes and hams today. I did like full on full-on workouts, like how I was doing them before. And they have translated into my appetite. I feel my appetite going through the roof right now um, because I'm getting some really heavy, heavy given this body, <laughs> this circumstance I'm in, heavy lifting sessions in. And I'm still doing an hour of um, brisk incline walking on the treadmill. So that's good. I'm staying active. And honestly, it's for no other reason than to just stay in the game. I find that I sort of fall apart mentally and lose all my motivation and get really tired and just um, like not wanting to do anything with my days and my life if I don't stay active. When I stay active, I feel a lot more awake and alert throughout the day. And especially with walking, I feel like I'm doing things to help my body and my baby align themselves. Um, but also like with lifting, it makes me feel like I'm still in it, you know, like I've not completely fallen apart or turned into a bowl of soggy cereal. And I don't know, I just, it mentally, mentally makes me feel good. Also mentally makes me feel capable still like, oh yeah, of course I can, I can go pick up the kids. Yeah. I run these errands. Yeah. I can do this, this and that. It makes me feel normal. So it's very much important for me to maintain the routine as much as it is to just maintain my strength and health. Diet we touched upon already, it's been pretty heavy. And so I will let that walk us into my weigh-in. I weighed in this morning at 75.5 kilo. So that's a 0 0.7 kilo increase, I believe, from last week, which is the steepest weight increase I have experienced since um, the end of last year. But that's okay because I, I know why and I, and I am fine with it. You know, it's like we're in the final weeks and I have no doubt that my baby and my body are packing on the reserves they need to see it through to the end because no matter what we want to talk about with like labor signs and this and that and whatever, we're running out of time, <laughs> you know, like the end is near. So now I'm up 11.5 kilo so far for the whole pregnancy. My goal is 11 and a half to 12 kilo total. So I think we've done good. Anyway, that is my update for now. So let it be locked into time, 39 weeks pregnant, baby number three. And let's now fast forward to Friday and go over the midwife appointment and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I get to get a check because I'm just so dang curious to see if there's any change to my cervix after basically almost a whole month of insane contractions. We'll see. So here we go.